Hi everybody and welcome. In this video, we'll work with matrices and the graphing calculator at the college algebra level. We'll cover adding, subtracting, and multiplying matrices, as well as finding the inverse of a matrix and solving a system of equations using matrices. For adding and subtracting matrices, I recommend doing it by hand without a calculator. It's so much faster. Just add and subtract the corresponding elements. Here's a couple of examples. The dimensions obviously have to be the same for both matrices. Multiplying is also faster to do by hand. By the time you enter and edit two matrices into your calculator and type the multiply command, you could have found the answer by hand. Here's how. Multiply the first row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix, adding as you go. The result is the entry in the first row first column of the answer. Here, for example, you get negative 1 plus 4 equals 3. Then multiply the first row of the first matrix times the second column of the second matrix. 2 plus 0 equals 2 in this case. And there's the entry for the first row, second column of the answer, and so on. Got it? Notice that the number of columns of the first matrix must equal the number of rows in the second matrix. And the answer in this case is a 3 by 3 matrix, which are the two outer numbers. Okay? Practice this a few times and you'll get it pretty fast. Let's go on. Finally, we come to the process of finding the inverse of a matrix, which when you do it by hand using row operations is so tedious and cumbersome that technology is a huge time saver. And make one little mistake and you're a goner. So let's do this using the calculator. Here's the problem. Non-singular just means the matrix has an inverse. Okay, let's open up the graphing calculator. All right, hit the matrix key to get to the matrix menu, right arrow to edit, and let's edit matrix A, so hit enter. The dimensions of our matrix is three by three. And if there's another matrix already there, like you can see here, just type right over it. Let's see, our matrix, the first row is one, one, zero. And the second row is negative 1, 3, and 4. And the third row is 0, 4, and 3. All right, double check because it's so easy to make a mistake. Looks good. When you're done, hit second and quit to get back to the home screen. Then go back to the matrix menu. We want the name of matrix A to appear on the home screen, so hit enter. And there it is. Now hit the X inverse key and hit enter. Ta-da! There it is. It's as simple as that. There's our inverse. Most of the time we prefer our answer in fraction form. Would you like it that way? No problem. The calculator can do it. Watch this. I'll clear the screen. And then I'll tell the calculator to retype our last entry. And this time I'll add to our entry the fraction command. So I'll go to the math menu and choose number one. So this tells the calculator to give our answer as a fraction in simplest form. So hit enter, ta-da, and there it is. Pretty cool, huh? That saves so much work, doesn't it? Let's move on to our final topic. Now that we're experts in finding the inverse of a matrix, oh, and by the way, you can check it. Take the original matrix, multiply it by the inverse, and you should get the identity matrix. Now let's solve a system of equations. If there's only two equations and two unknowns, I'd do it by hand, using paper and pencil. Again, it's faster than entering matrices and command lines into the calculator, but three equations and three unknowns or more, that's a different story. The algebra is so difficult and tedious, 
and it's so easy to make a mistake that it becomes so beneficial to use technology. Here's a typical example. I'll pause while you read the question. Can you see there are three unknowns? Let X be the amount invested in treasury bills, Y the amount invested in treasury bonds, and Z the amount invested in corporate bonds. So to solve for three unknowns, you must have three equations. And here they are. The first one says that all three investments must total $30,000. Then for the second equation, the interest earned from all three investments must be $1,060. And finally, twice the amount invested in corporate bonds, subtracted from the amount invested in treasury bills, is zero. Solving this by hand is no fun using paper and pencil. No fun at all. So let's use technology. Once you've done it a couple of times, it goes very fast. Make an augmented matrix of the system, input it into the calculator, and then put it in reduced row echelon form. Analyze the results to solve the system, and that's it. Okay, let's try it. Open the matrix menu, and let's edit matrix A. We want a 3 by 4 matrix. And let's, that is three rows and four columns. Let's type in the entries for each row and column. There it is. I just did it for you. Let's check all the entries. You make one little mistake and you're in big trouble. Let's see. That part of the matrix looks okay. Let's go over to the fourth column. Yep. Looks good. Now let's quit to go back to the home screen, then go back to the matrix menu, right arrow to the math menu, and choose B. There it is, which puts it in R ref or reduced row echelon form. Now go back to the matrix menu, hit enter to choose matrix A, close parentheses, and hit enter. Ta-da! Reading across, you can see that 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals 14,000. In other words, the amount you want to invest in treasury bills is $14,000. Similarly, $9,000 should be invested in treasury bonds, and $7,000 should be invested in corporate bonds. Beautiful, isn't it? Most systems of three equations and three unknowns have an answer like we got here. But just as in solving a system of two equations and two unknowns, you'll recall that sometimes there's one solution, sometimes there's no solution, and sometimes there's infinitely many solutions. This graphic illustrates the visualization of that for both systems. So you're probably wondering, well, what happens when the, in the calculator? What happens in the calculator when you get a dependent or an inconsistent system? I'll show you. Here's an example of a system that when you attempt to put the augmented matrix into R ref form, look at the last row. It says 0 equals 1. Uh oh, that's a false statement. So you know this system is inconsistent and has no solution. Here's a system that gives you a true statement in the last row. 0 does equal 0. But that means now you've got a system of three unknowns but only two equations. This system is consistent, also known as dependent, and has infinitely many solutions. Here's one way to show the answer. Let z be any number, and then you can obtain x and y using the equation shown, giving you infinitely many solutions. Okay? I hope this video helps you successfully use technology with matrices in your math class to save time and effort which is what the graphing calculator and computer software are so good at. Alright, good luck, and thanks for watching.